Spectrum analyzers are very useful if you work with radios. Unfortunately, they are very expensive. Until recently, when I saw this small device for around $50. Unbelievable. But is it any good? Gritty YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. Electrical signals are not visible to us. This is why we need instruments to see them. Simple devices like multimeters to see constant signals or more sophisticated ones like oscilloscopes which show us how signals change over time. If we work with radios, typical oscilloscopes are not capable of displaying very fast signals. This is why we use the so-called spectrum analyzers to visualize what happens. In this video, we will see what such a spectrum analyzer does and how it works. Have a close look at this cheap device and compare its readings with a more expensive one. See the difference between spectrum analyzers, vector network analyzers and SDR radios. Let's get started with the first topic. What does it do and how does it work? A spectrum analyzer shows the power of a signal across frequencies. The x-axis shows the frequency range, here for example between 0 and 3 GHz. On the y-axis we see the power of the signals in dBm. Keep in mind, 3 dBm more means double the power. 0 dBm is 1 mW and minus 70 dBm is 0.0000000001 milliwatt, a very small signal. This will be important to understand why such devices are quite expensive. I use my Baofeng radio for a short demonstration. If I press the transmit button, we see that the radio emits a signal on the intended frequency of 145 0.550 MHz. But it also emits signals on other frequencies called harmonics. And we see signals popping up which are not emitted by the Baofeng. Typically, we see signals in the 2.4 GHz Wi Fi band because I have an access point in my lab. The strength of the different signals is also different and changes if I change the distance to the spectrum analyzer. This is one application of a spectrum analyzer. To see how our transmitter behaves, if it emits on the intended frequency and how much power. But how is this done? The principle is quite simple if we understand one thing. Frequency mixing. Frequent viewers remember this principle if they watched the introduction to SDR in video number 286. If we mix two signals, the output of such a mixer is two signals. Frequency 1 plus frequency 2 and frequency 1 minus frequency 2. Frequency 1 in this case is called local oscillator or LO. Frequency 2 is the input frequency. If the input frequency is similar to the LO frequency, the difference signal has a frequency of nearly 0 Hz. The sum has double the frequency. The latter is not important for us and we have to filter it out. If we measure the power in the signal around 0 Hz and show it in a graph, we have the y-axis of the spectrum. Of course, we have to filter this signal to cover only a very narrow band. The width of this filter is called resolution bandwidth. On my Sigland SSA3032X, it is currently 1 MHz. So all signals inside a bucket of 1 MHz are added to the displayed power. Also the noise in this bucket. Therefore the noise level is around minus 70 dBm. To show how spectrum analyzers work, I change this bandwidth. Now we see that it starts with a very low frequency and moves up to the maximum frequency. The smaller the bandwidth, the slower the scan speed, because the analyzer has to probe more points to cover the whole spectrum. In such a mode, short signals are no more detected. 
This is why we can use peak hold and hope for the chance of detecting also short signals. Like that we see our 2.4 GHz signal even if it is not always on. Next I show you another important function. Again I use the Baofeng on 145.550 MHz and display the frequencies from 140 to 150 MHz. The scan is now much faster because it only has to cover a small band. The signal seems to be about 4 MHz wide, which is hopefully not the case. Only if I reduce the resolution bandwidth we see more details and we see that the signal is very narrow band. If I modulate the signal with my natural sine wave generator, we do not see a difference. Only if I zoom in to only 100 kHz span, we see the modulation of the signal. The resolution bandwidth is now 1 kHz. And the noise floor is down to minus 100 dBm. Very sensitive. I show you all these details because later you will see the differences between this expensive and big device and this small and cheap one. The next important application of spectrum analyzers is to check out filters. To do that we have to input a signal into the filter and display its output. The output of the filter therefore has to be connected to the analyzer. To produce an input signal we have to add a component called tracking generator. If the frequency of this tracking generator and the scan frequency of the spectrum analyzer are synchronized, the analyzer always sees the full power of the tracking generator. By the way, this is why it is called tracking generator. It tracks the frequency of the analyzer. Let's connect the output of the tracking generator to the input of the spectrum analyzer. We see the noise floor. As soon as we switch the tracking generator on, we see a curve. The output of the tracking generator is set to minus 20 dBm, but the spectrum analyzer does not show a constant curve. This is because both the tracking generator and the spectrum analyzer are not ideal across all 3 GHz. And we have cables. Fortunately, this fact does not matter too much if we press this button. Normalize on. Now the response is completely flat at 0 dBm. The spectrum analyzer stored the differences and adjusted its display automatically. Cool! Now I exchange this adapter between the tracking generator and the analyzer with a filter. I do not tell you what its purpose is. You tell me. It has a very flat response across the whole 3 GHz, very similar to the plane connector from before. Only if we have a closer look, we see a difference. Here it has a deep dip of around minus 40 dB. Let's zoom in. The notch is from around 80 to 110 MHz. What is it? Filters like that are used if you live nearby of an FM radio station. Such stations can block your receiver also if you intend to listen to other frequencies. In those cases, such filters make sure your receiver is much more sensitive to signals like LoRa, which are much weaker. The next filter shows this behavior. It blocks high frequencies and therefore is called a low pass filter. It has a minus 3 dB point at around 470 MHz. And really, it is sold as a low pass with the cutoff frequency of 450 MHz. The third application of spectrum analyzers is the measuring of antennas. If you attach a reflection bridge like this one, you can check your antennas. I will not do that because I have a nice and cheap device that is better suited for this purpose. And the whole device costs less than just this reflection bridge. Let's now head over to the cheap spectrum analyzer. Ah, here I see that I have to remind you to like or subscribe if you want to see other videos like that. You find a few versions of the same design, some with and others without case. I got this one from Banggood and it is called LTDC35-4000M. 
Its coverage is, as we can see from the title, 35 MHz to 4.4 GHz. The top frequency is even higher than the one of the Sigland, but it costs only around $50, about 60 times less than the big one. How come? It has no display or button and the PC controls it, a first cost reduction. Let's go into the schematic. Here we see how simple it is. Let's try to find the relevant parts. Here we have the mixer chip. It gets the input signal directly from the SMA connector and from this ADF4351 wideband synthesizer, which acts as the local oscillator. Here you see that this component limits the range of the overall device. Its range is from 35 to 4400 MHz. The output of the mixer is connected to a logarithmic amplifier, which creates a signal for the ADC of the microprocessor. A low-pass filter removes the high frequencies. This setup acts as a power meter. Between the mixer and the amplifier, we find a filter. This filter defines the resolution bandwidth. It is fixed and we will later see what this means. An STM32 microprocessor controls all. This 25 MHz oscillator generates the clocks. These components form a working spectrum analyzer that can detect RF signals. Missing is only the tracking generator. We find it here. It uses the same ADF4351 as the local oscillator. Its output is connected to the second SMA connector and you have to switch it on with this button on the back. The blue LED shows that it is enabled and the two yellow LEDs show which oscillator is working, the local oscillator alone or with the tracking generator. The PCB looks like that and the case is really small. To compare, here you see only one PCB of the Sigland. If you are interested in a hardcore teardown, you find a link to the video from SignalPath. Excellent, but as I said, hardcore. Let us now do the same tests as we did with the big box. First, we have to download software through a link provided by Banggood. It is made in Germany by ham operator Andreas Lindenau. I doubt that he gets anything from this deal. It also seems that he abandoned this project and created a new one. At least I did not find it on his homepage, where I found another version. I assume it is newer and I use this one. Unfortunately, I did not find any documentation and also the help does not provide anything. Software for cliffhangers, as we will later see. This spectrum analyzer project, by the way, seems to have its roots in Germany many years ago and found its way to China, like the transistor tester story shown in video number 290. I connect the device to a USB connector and start a scan between 35 and 3000 MHz, comparable with the test we did before with the Sigland. I select 1000 points and the scan speed is quite fast. Unfortunately, I do not see a signal from my Baofeng. Does this device really work? Let's quickly check what happens. One step is nearly 3 MHz. It starts at 35 MHz. Every 3 MHz means that it measures around 143 and 146 MHz. So it does not see my signal at 145.55 MHz. Why did the Sigland see it? Because it uses a wider resolution bandwidth for faster scan speeds. So it sees signals which are not exactly on the scanned frequencies. The small box does not see it, even if we increase the samples to the maximum of 2000. On the other hand, if we decrease the samples to 1450, it sees the signal, but not the harmonics just by chance, because one of the scanning points is close to 145 MHz. If we zoom in to 140 to 150 MHz, we see an interesting signal, very different from the one seen before on the Sigland. It consists of a peak with a notch in the middle. It is obvious that this notch does not exist in reality. The device itself produces it. 
Just ignore it and you are OK. Now we focus even closer, 145 to 146 MHz. Here we see a similar curve as before. Unfortunately, no more details are visible. So we can reduce to 100 samples and get a decent scanning speed. Even now, we do not see a difference when I modulate the carrier. Here we see the limits of the cheap device because of its fixed resolution bandwidth. Another limit is also its sensitivity. It is not as sensitive as the Siglent and has also no built-in pre-amplifier. The noise floor is always at around minus 70 dBm, which means no signal. Maybe this fact is not so important for makers. You find information to enhance this device. Three areas of enhancements are proposed. The first is here in the input stage, where it is suggested to remove this resistor. It seems to reduce the input power and is not necessary. Another area is this filter. And the third one is to add a small capacitor for a cleaner power supply. I leave you links to the enhancements in the video comments. One important thing, there is no input protection or warning if your signal is too high. So pay attention. Some owners of such devices wrote that they had to replace the mixer chip because they did not pay attention. Maybe you order a few chips with your device. They are not very expensive. Always use attenuators if you work with powerful transmitters. You get them cheap on AliExpress and they usually are good up to the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi or Bluetooth band. Now we leave the power measurements of transmitters and use the tracking generator to test filters. As said before, you have to enable the tracking generator with this button. We also connect the tracking generator directly to the input of the analyzer to get the normalization curve. And really, we get a curve which is not flat and below 0 dBm. Not an issue as we saw with the Siglent. Unfortunately, I did not find out how to calibrate the device or normalize this curve. Maybe you can help me. I also tried with the old software provided by Banggood. There is a calibration function, but I was not able to use it. Here I would have loved a manual to read. At least nobody can tell me RTFM. But we can use the device also without normalization. We save the curve created with a direct connection and display it together with a measured filter curve. Like that, we get a feeling about the filter performance. Here we see the FM radio station filter and here is the 450 MHz low pass. In this curve, we also see the low sensitivity of the cheap analyzer. It shows minus 70 dBm. In reality, it is around minus 40 dBm. Just to show you how expensive filters can be. This one, for example, costs $75 used. And here you find another difference between the two devices. The Sigland has filters everywhere. This small box only a very few and simple ones. By the way, don't worry. I got this filter for 10 bucks at a ham festival. To check the linearity of the device, I measure a 20 and a 40 dB attenuator. The 20 dB shows around 24 dB and the 40 dB attenuator reduces the signal to below the sensitivity of my device. If I find out how to calibrate this little bugger, I'm sure its linearity could be improved. But for sure not as good as the Siglent. Summarized, is this small tool useful? If you want to know on which frequency your transmitter works and have an idea about its output power and harmonics, you can use it. But signal or bandwidth analysis cannot be done for narrow signals. For filter analysis, it is usable if you are not interested in exact values like the dampening. But you should get indications if the filter is OK or not. If you work with radio frequencies above 35 MHz, it is a nice addition to a lab. Not the first and not the second priority, but maybe a birthday or Christmas gift, because it can be fun to play with. Definitely a higher priority has a network analyzer like the one I showed in video number 191. 
or if you need lower frequencies, also this Nano VNA, which, by the way, uses similar chips from analog devices as the device tested today. Because it also measures the phase of the signal, it is much better for antenna analysis. A must for all LoRa enthusiasts. And the Nano VNA can also show filter curves. An alternative to this spectrum analyzer could be an SDR receiver. It for sure can show on which frequency you transmit. And with the right software you can also get diagrams which are quite broadband. I never tried it, but I would assume that it does not have the same dynamic range. You cannot measure filters with an SDR receiver only. You have to add a white noise source that emulates a tracking generator. Maybe stuff for another video? I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. You find the links in the description. Thank you. Bye.